Hey there folks, welcome to day 40 of my year of solo board gaming. Uh, I'm coming to you from the other side of having done role player adventures the entire campaign uh, and having had to assemble those videos, put them up, do some edits where necessary, ignoring edits where I probably should have had some edits. Uh, so I, for, for anybody who actually watched the entire thing, thank you so much. Um, John, I, I, you're, the, you're the primary ringleader right now uh, for watching these videos and liking these videos, so thank you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do some shorter videos uh, for the next couple. Uh, we're gonna do four uh, button shy games uh, because they do make for very quick games. They're they are primarily solitary based. I love the fact that they all have these like little wallets that are just easy to carry, easy to bring with you. Uh, we're gonna do one. This is called the Maiden in the Forest. This came out uh, by Taunt Sanders. I think this came out in twenty fifteen. Uh, came out a while ago. Um, I really need to watch how often I'm saying um. And basically, you are attempting to visit a bunch of trees so that they all f flip over or something. I, I'm not entirely sure if I understand uh, the way that it works or the way that the, the best way to play would be the good way to put it. I understand how it works. Um, but this is your maiden. These are some movement cards, uh, swapping cards, and then this is sort of a reference for you. A uh, little rule book there, and then we have our trees. So the first thing that we do is we actually shuffle the trees, and this is going to be a little difficult because I'm not sure how much space this is going to take up on the table. Uh, so I want to make sure that I actually... Let's do this. Let's use these as parameters for what you can see and what you can't see. So that should give me some idea of how big of a space to make for the circle. A little bit off center here. And when you start these, the trees, uh, the trunks should be facing in towards the center of the circle. And you're assembling them in the shape of a clock. As you can see. So ideally, these will be off center. And I have one extra. Why do I have one extra? Because I made this too big down here. That's why. Yeah, I've I've tried this now a couple times, and I can never seem to get it to look right. All right. These are the woods that our maiden is walking through. She starts here at the 12 o'clock position, and we'll have 12 turns to try to complete the game. Uh, and generally, from what I've seen so far, they, I've only played this once or twice, um, but basically I've put myself into an unwinnable situation. So, oops, because uh, I wasn't really thinking ahead. Uh, the way that this works is that we're going to get these special object... I need this one here, too. Sorry. Uh, we're going to get these special object cards. And the idea is that we're going to pull one aside... And all right, so this has this little hair comb, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be. Uh, but that means that there are three of these that have hair combs on them. We cannot move any of those three. Those three have to stay in position, which is fine. We then have the other three to work from. We can do any of these changes. Uh, each of these objects has another item, has a, a description of how you can change things. And you can do them, you can do any of them, you can do all of them, but you can only do each one once. Uh, so I can't do this one twice, I can't do this one twice. Um, but the movements here, the one that we can't use is swap any two adjacent cards. All right. Uh, we can swap two opposite cards. So I could swap this and this, for example, or this and this. I could swap any two cards, like I could do that or that or that and that, it doesn't really matter. Except I can't do this and this because, again, I can't move any of the ones that have the little hair thing on them. I can also swap two cards where the colors or objects match. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could swap these two cards, or I could swap this card and that card. Now, the purpose of making these changes is that once that's during the day phase. At the night phase, you'll then have the opportunity to basically grow two cards that are in a specific uh, orientation. So for example, uh, two cards who must act, match their color or object are an equal number of cards apart. So these two items right here, I could actually switch these if I wanted to. And if I were to move this here, I could move, I could do that as well. 
And basically, to evolve a card, you start with the stem facing in, you rotate it like that so the stem is facing out, and then one more time to make the tree lie dormant. Now, once the tree is dormant, it's no longer available to you. Uh, you can't do anything with it. You're, that's it. You're done. Um, but that's pretty much it. Now, I've been trying to understand like why... Uh, Oh, let me uh, let me do one more thing. So in this one, uh, there's also one other pos position you can have, or two other positions. So that's the path. Divergence is if you take three cards that are equal number of spaces apart. So there's three cards in between. So th these ones would count. If card one matches card two and card two matches card three in some way, either by color or by object, uh, then you are good to go. You can go ahead and flip, you evolve all three of them. Um, each pair must match however you don't have to make it all the way around so one and two can match two and three can match but three and one don't have to match as long as there's one card essentially another way to think about it is there, there's a card that this matches the color and object of this matches the color and object of that's it and then finally there's crossroads uh, where you can do that with four cards and they're equal number of parts so for example one and two, two and three, three and four, but again, not for necessarily four and one. So these two could be the same color, these could be the same object, these could be the same color, and you could evolve all, all of them. And you can do that once, twice, or three times. So you can evolve, uh, you can do the crossroads twice, you can, or once, you can do the path once, but you can't do the crossroads twice. Now, what I've been trying to figure out is, All right, so we have ourselves a pattern here, and our goal is to basically flip as many of these as possible each turn. And ideally, by the end of the game, all of these will be in their dormant state. Um, all of these will be like this, and we'll have won the game. Now, we cannot touch any of the ones that have these little this little comb on it. This, this symbol will change each turn. So what we cannot do is... Uh, for example, move a blue one here and then be able to affect both of these. And I think I may have misstated that earlier, so my apologies. Um, we can try to do these ones. These ones are actually set up right now to be like that. Uh, if we were to exchange, say, this and this, and then find something to bridge the two, these two together, like we could, we could do something like that. Um, right now, as it stands, we're going to be able to do the path once, uh, but not twice, and that's pretty much where we stand. Uh, if we were to move this over here, swap these two, and then swap these two, we could make it all the way around uh, as a crossroads, but that's neither here nor there. Sort of getting ahead of myself, my apologies. So right now we have a couple different possibilities. We have, we can swap opposites, uh, which might actually be a really good idea. We can swap any two cards, uh, and then we can swap... Uh, any two cards where the colors or objects match. Uh, let's see, let's think about how we want to do this. Uh, right now, we can't affect this, this, or this. Uh, so that kind of makes the doing the any of the threes, uh, any of the, what's it, what's it called? The divergences. Uh, difficult, because the only divergence that would actually work, I believe, would be this one. Like, that's it. That's all we can do. Now, if we were to swap this with this, which is opposite, we could actually do a divergence and then also do a path because that would work as well. Uh, what we would not be able to do is then do a crossroads. Uh, so let me think about this. If we swap that, is there a way that I can do crossroads? This, and I can swap these two to make a crossroads. Okay. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Play this to swap two opposite cards, and we'll swap these. You have to make sure that you keep the orientation correct. So if their stems were facing in before, they should be facing in now. We can then swap any two cards. And we can swap... Wait, which ones did I just do? I think I did the wrong ones. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not mean to do these two. I meant to do these two. 
And then we can do any two cards and we can swap these. All right. We're not going to use this last one. But now what we can do is we can evolve because this works as if we treat this as one, this is the same color as this one, and this is the same symbol as this one. So this makes our one, two, three. We can evolve each of these. To evolve each of these or grow these or whatever term you want to use, you rotate them. Now they're all facing inwards. Now these two can be evolved as well because they are a path as opposed to a divergence. So this will get rotated. And because this was already rotated, this gets turned over and we have our first dormant tree. Finally, uh, because we can't do the path more than once, we can't do divergence more than once, we can still try to do a crossroads. We've got a crossroads here and a crossroads here. Now that means that one and two uh, do not have anything in common and I've messed up royally. How did I mess that up? We should have actually played this other card, so we will count, we'll count that in as well. Sorry, my bad. No, because then the other one wouldn't have worked. So never mind. Never mind. I messed up. I screwed up royally on that. So we're not going to do a crossroads. There's no crossroads that we can pull off here. Very sad. Very sad. Uh, so in this case, uh, we end our night phase. We have at least gotten that far with that one. We're going to move to 1 o'clock. We're going to sh uh, sh shuffle these up. And we're going to repeat the process. And you have till 12 o'clock to make all the trees dormant. Uh, we're not going to be able to use the birds, do anything with the birds. So that's this, this, and this. Which is not bad because that actually cuts back our crossroads only in one. Same with the path. We can still do that as a path. Uh, we can't do this as a path anymore. Uh, it does mean that we can't do, like, divergences are going to be really difficult. I think, if not impossible. Because I think every divergence, except for this one, has... Yeah, this one we can do, and actually it's already set up to do, so that's good. Um, let's take a look here. We can't do any of these, and I kind of want to get this one taken care of soon, but we can't because there's nothing that will involve that one. Uh, we'll have one divergence to play off of, and maybe we try this. I've already closed that one blue. We could swap the yellow. We could swap these two. Does that make sense? We swapped out these two and then maybe No, actually, I don't think anything is going to make much sense here. I think we're actually just going to take it as is. Uh, we're not going to make any changes to the cards. We are going to go into our night phase. We're going to go ahead and evolve these ones because this forms a, a triple. We got one, one, uh, sorry, one, two, and two, three. I think that's right. So all of these evolve. And then we can actually evolve these two as well because they make a path. So this gets put to dormant. One of the things that's really uh, you can really mess yourself up on is you can make everything dormant too fast um, and put yourself in a position where you can't really you can't really win the game. So what we probably want to do right now is focus on getting the remaining cards as uh, as dormant as possible or not dormant, just get them flipped for now. So we can't move any leaves this time. So this one, this one, and I think one of them is already closed down. So that's good. Uh, we can affect these three, and we can affect these three. We still have these two as facing out. Uh, we also have this one facing out, and that's it. Uh, and this one down here. So... I think if we can do 
If we can do a crossroads, that would probably be our best bet. Our options available to us are two of the same color, two adjacent cards, and two of any cards. Uh, so let's see how we can make this happen. These are already matching in terms of symbol. Uh, we don't have another, as is this. So this just needs to be red or yellow. except I don't really like that idea. Um, I could swap this and this. That would make it so three of my cards were facing out. I like that idea. I like that idea quite a bit. So I think one of the things I'm going to do first is just simply any two cards. We'll do this that direction. So we're going to swap this card and this card. And now we've got a crossroads set up. And then This unfortunately doesn't quite work. It almost does. We, these are two blues, but we would need this to be a red, that red, or... Yeah. Don't think that we're going to get one like that. However, if this were over here... And I've already swapped any two cards, so unfortunately I can't really do anything else um, that I would like to do here. Yeah, I can't really, I can't really pull out anything else. So we'll we'll stick with that. We'll go into our night phase. Uh, we're going to do the crossroads, and we're also going to do this opposite each other. So the crossroads, each of these get turned around. So for most of these, that means they're now facing the inwards, but this actually gets flipped. And then we'll also flip these on a path. Those are now dormant as well. And you start to see where some of the problem comes into play is that if you're not careful, like I'm not being careful here, I'm just literally just flipping as is. Uh, you're gonna run into a situation where you cannot win the game because you flipped too much. Right now, as it stands, we have to flip this once. We have to do a sort of a, a divergence here. And then we have to do this one. And what that'll do is that'll make this, 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 this all dormant. Now the problem is, is that even though this could also be made dormant, I'll have that left over and I won't win the game. So I think I've already lost. Unless there's something else I'm missing, but I'm pretty sure that that is correct. I think I've already lost the game. We'll go ahead and play this through. We'll see how uh, how it comes out. But yeah, if I can't, yeah, I, I, I messed up somewhere. So we can't move any of these. We can't affect any of these. We can only affect these. There's no point in even actually, oh, this should have been moved. So there's no point in continuing because none of the things that we need to affect can be flipped. So we'll go one more. All right, so leaves can't be affected. Everything else can. And so we can move two adjacent cards to move these two around. And I think that's all we're going to play. So that means that this forms a divergence, and we'll flip each of these. And I don't think there was anything else we could have... Oh, we could have, yeah, we could not have, we could not have done anything else. We had to change these two around. Yeah, like I said, I, it, it's easy to make a mistake early on and just be in a position where you can't really do anything else. So she should be down here. We can now flip these. And we're left with, we're left with sadly one more. So it doesn't really matter at this point. We can't, we've lost the game. Uh, this is an amusing little, uh, 
using a little card game. I have a feeling that if you just simply focus and not move blindly through, you can probably win the game pretty easily. Um, but I messed up here, obviously. Uh, I was not counting uh, correctly. Uh, you figure every card, there's 12 cards here total. Every card has to be affected twice. Uh, so that's 24 moves total. And if you're not counting carefully, your moves, uh, you're affecting two, three, and four each time which means every time you affect three, you have to affect another three, because otherwise you're going to end up with an odd number of affected cards. Uh, I'm not sure where I went wrong here. I think a lot of it has to do with um, it, it, just simply not paying attention to which cards I was flipping. I'm sure there's some math related to the the way, the, the positions of the cards uh, and how you're affecting them, because they are evenly spaced. Uh, so, you know, if you do, if you do a these two, they're both sort of the same modulo six, and if you do these, they're the same modulo four. And I have to fit. I have to think that somewhere along those lines, the modulos of the cards that you're affecting can also. You, you also need to keep track of that. But that is uh, a made in the forest. The maiden in the forest by Todd Sanders uh, from Button Shy Games, uh, and that is going to conclude it. Uh, thank you for joining me. I'm so glad this was a nice quick one after the marathon sessions that I've had recently. We're going to do this properly. We're going to do the 12 cards for the trees on this side. We'll do the instructions and the maiden herself. We'll do that on this side. We'll put the rules in the back. And there we go. That's it. That's the, that's the game. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, please do all the YouTube things. Click like, click subscribe. Uh, please comment below if I've made a mistake in the rules. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And again, these will be some nice short ones. Uh, thank you so much. And see you tomorrow.